As someone from an environmental engineering background, I've got a strong focus on epidemiology or real world data obtained from large populations. And I think this gives a very useful perspective compared to what we normally get from the government and from the media. For example, uh, what you've been hearing from the government and media for the last 10 or 20 years is that fish is a dangerous food and that pregnant women and nursing mothers shouldn't eat fish, otherwise their children may have a decreased IQ. Now actually, if you look at epidemiological evidence, exactly the opposite is true. There's a 2007 study of 12,000 pregnant women showing that women who ate 12 ounces or more of fish per week had children with an average of six points higher verbal IQ compared to women who didn't eat fish. There's a recent Scandinavian study showing that men who ate more than one meal of fish per week had an average of 11 points higher IQ compared to men who didn't eat fish. There's an ongoing 15-year study in the Seychelles Islands showing that women and children who ate fish an average of 12 times per week had no negative impact from that high rate of fish consumption. So the actual evidence from epidemiological studies generally points in exactly the opposite direction of what you're being told by the media and government. And this isn't the only example of misinformation being propagated in the media and by government. Another good example is hydrogenated oil. You were told for 10 years or more that hydrogenated oil and margarine were the healthy alternative to other types of saturated fat, such as butter or tropical oils. Actually, there was never any epidemiological evidence to support those claims. And gradually, as evidence was developed, it all pointed towards hydrogenated oil being an extremely unhealthy food. Another example of this sort of thing is what people were told for a generation about formula feeding versus breastfeeding. People were told that formula feeding was a safe and convenient alternative to breastfeeding, despite the fact that there was no evidence to support that claim. And anyone who claimed that formula feeding might be dangerous was generally shouted down as practicing pseudoscience because studies hadn't been conducted and there really wasn't any way to prove one claim or the other. Finally, at an unimaginable human cost and suffering, we were able to develop evidence and it generally shows that formula feeding more or less doubles an infant's risk of death during the period when they're being formula fed. And it's also potentially linked to a slight lifelong negative impact to mental aptitude. So it's important to realize whenever you hear things like this in the media or even from government, that there's often, if not usually, a, an industrial interest behind that information. Very few stories get repeated continually in the media if there aren't press agents on behalf of industry pushing that story. So let's look at what happens to the average American growing up today. First, they're probably born to a mother who's eating far fewer omega-3 fatty acids than she would be normally. This is because people are paranoid about eating fish because of all these stories which get repeated in the media, despite the fact that fish is by far the best source of DHA and EPA and other omega-3s. And omega-3 fatty acids are the main building block of a child's nervous system. Also, most mothers in America today aren't eating as many nuts or whole seeds as they would traditionally, and this is the other main source of omega-3s in the diet. After that, the child is potentially formula-fed, given an industrial product which has never been properly tested to this day, and yet is potentially linked to a lifelong negative impact to mental aptitude. Next, the child grows up eating a diet which is heavy in fried food and hydrogenated oil. This is linked to oxidative stress. The child also probably isn't eating many antioxidants in the form of vegetables or fresh food, which would counteract this oxidative stress. And granted, this topic isn't studied properly, but there is limited evidence linking this oxidative stress, first of all, to the explosion of heart disease we see in America, but also potentially to the explosion in neurological diseases, such as Alzheimer's and autism. Unfortunately, just as with formula feeding, it isn't being studied properly. We're running a massive experiment on ourselves and our children. Then, if all that wasn't enough, we give ourselves and our children potential neurotoxins like fluoride, aspartame, and MSG. When you don't have any good scientific evidence, which is the case for almost all of the unnatural substances in our diet today, you simply have to go with common sense and traditional wisdom. So now I'm going to go over one of the hardest to prove issues in our modern diet. Um, you probably intuitively know that it's wrong to eat a vulture or a rat which has lived in a garbage dump. Now, if you were to go to a scientist and say, why is it wrong to eat a vulture or a rat which has lived in a garbage dump? Believe it or not, the scientist wouldn't have a good answer for you. In fact, uh, up until recently in the United States, we used to actually feed roadkill to industrially raised pigs and chickens. This was done under the theory that uh, there's nothing wrong with ingesting roadkill. 
but people intuitively knew that it was such a disgusting practice that it was stopped. And the only scientific way that they could stop it was saying that, well, some of this roadkill is cats and dogs which have flea collars, and the toxins in the flea collars are dangerous to humans, so we're going to stop feeding roadkill to pigs and chickens which humans eat. But really, intuitively, you simply know that it's wrong to eat rotten meat or to eat an animal like a vulture that lives off of rotten meat. Now, theoretically, I believe the reason almost every culture on Earth has this prohibition is that rotten meat is full of neurotoxins and other toxins produced by bacteria. And I went over this in a previous video. Basically, when meat rots, bacteria in the meat produce toxins to stop larger animals from eating that meat so that the bacteria can digest the meat themselves. And neurotoxins are the most effective type of toxin for bacteria to produce. So that's why you get sick when you eat rotten meat. It's full of toxins produced by bacteria. It's kind of a large unstudied field. And we didn't really have to study it traditionally because people knew not to eat rotten meat and people knew not to eat vultures or rats. And you weren't really getting these toxins in your diet. Unfortunately today, we feed slaughterhouse byproducts and a lot of other rotten byproducts to industrially raised chickens, pigs, and cattle. And this was also, by the way, the cause of mad cow disease. There are a lot of potential things that we don't know about this practice. What we do know is that traditionally this was prohibited. And your own common sense tells you that it's wrong to eat roadkill, no matter how much you cook the roadkill, and it's wrong to eat an animal that eats other dead animals, an animal that lives off of carrion. So in my opinion, this is potentially the largest and most unknown source of neurotoxins in the American diet today. The fact that industrially raised animals are fed slaughterhouse byproducts and other types of rotten feed, and that humans then ingest these industrially raised animals. The only way to avoid this is basically to eat organic meat. You see, if you just follow your common sense and you follow traditional wisdom and you eat a natural diet that's been proven over the course of thousands of years, you generally don't have to worry about any of these problems. 